you for joining us at the Episcopal Church of Our Savior of Madison County for our Sunday worship service on this Sunday, November 22nd. Although this service is virtual, the presence of Jesus Christ is very real and eternal among us.
God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and, and peace to his, his people on earth. Lord God, Lord, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. They shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We will say Psalm 95 responsibly by hold first. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, 
And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Episcopal the epistle is from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and a revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from the other, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food and thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that you saw the sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. As the season of ordinary time in our church calendar draws to a close, this morning we celebrate Christ as our King. This celebration, first known as the Feast of Christ the King, 
was established in 1925 by Pope Pius XI. That was seven years after the end of World War I, where there had been horrific loss of life in the war and economic hardship. Many Christians had begun to doubt that Christ existed and questioned whether the church had power to continue Christ's authority in the world. Non-Christian or nominally Christian dictators were rising to power in countries in Europe, and they often attempted to control the church. And there was growing secularism and declining belief in Christ and in the authority of the church. Pope Pius had hoped that faithful Christians might be reassured and gain strength and courage in a feast day to celebrate the reign of Christ in their lives and in the world. In many ways, our lives today are similar. People are weary of wars that seem to never end. Many people are emotionally burdened with the devastating loss of men and women who have died serving overseas in the military. Many soldiers who return home struggle with debilitating injuries and trauma as a result of their experience in the war front. Churches and Christians in America are deeply divided over doctrine as well as political and social issues. Many young adults are critical of what they see as the hypocrisy of church leaders, especially with regard to sexual abuse racism, and financial crimes that have been committed in some churches. Materialism and secularism seems to be increasing at breakneck speed. As a result, church membership in mainline denominations is declining. So where do we find hope? As Christians, we find hope in God and Jesus Christ. Perhaps more than ever, we need to focus on the relationship that we have with God through Jesus Christ. We celebrate Christ the King today before the beginning of Advent on, in one week. And during Advent, we anticipate the birth of the newborn King Jesus and the second coming of Christ. Now to our modern ears, the word king can sound dated and irrelevant. Many of the kings and countries that still have monarchies have immense wealth and live lives of extraordinary luxury that are completely foreign to us as hardworking Americans. This was also true of our ancestors living in Israel under the harsh and exploitative rule of monarchs such as King Herod. It's helpful for us to recall the unique way in which kings and their authority were understood in the Old Testament and ancient Judaism. The image of a shepherd was used to describe kings. The image was one of God being the compassionate and caring shepherd who protected and guided his flock the sheep who were the people of Israel. And this is beautifully expressed in the ancient words of the psalmist that we just heard. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. In the Old Testament, to have power over others meant that it must be used for the benefit of those with the least power. This was explained by Jesus when he said, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it's not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you, you must be a servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be a slave, a slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. 
This is what we call servant leadership. And Jesus models for us servant leadership. In ancient Israel and throughout the ancient Near East, the king was judged by how well he cared for widows and orphans and the people that were most vulnerable. In today's gospel from Matthew, we learn about the day of judgment in which all nations and all people will be judged based on how they have treated the most vulnerable and the least powerful. A distinction was made between goats and sheep. In Palestine, shepherds usually had mixed flocks of both goats and sheep. At night, the shepherds were separated. The shepherds separated the sheep from the goats. The sheep could remain outside because they had these warm woolly coats, while the goats had to be protected from the cold. But the sheep were also preferred over goats because the sheep had more commercial value. Matthew portrayed Jesus as the shepherd that would place the sheep on his right side and the goats on his left. The judgment about who would be considered a sheep or a goat depended on how people treated strangers, the hungry and the thirsty, the naked and the sick, and those in prison. It's interesting that the author Anne Lamont had asked rhetorically, who was it who said that to get into heaven, you needed a letter of recommendation from the poor? Today's gospel lesson is being preached to remind us that as faithful Christians, we should always take care of the poor, the weakest, the most vulnerable among us. But I think there's also another important lesson in today's gospel. Problems can arise when we judge the actions of other people. There is a risk that we can become self-righteous in judging others. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I'm often guilty of this. And I have to remind myself that it's God, not me, who will make the final judgment. And perhaps you've heard it said that you might be surprised to discover who you will meet in heaven. I love the wisdom of the Optimist Creed. It says in part, promise yourself to give so much time to the improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others. This is a helpful reminder for me. As fragile human beings, we all behave like sheep sometimes and like goats at other times. And if we're honest, we recognize that in one way or another, we have all sinned in the eyes of God. And we can each strive to behave like good sheep. But we must also be humble enough to recognize those times when we fall short and behave more like goats. It's not our job to separate the sheep from the goats. The kingdom of heaven is not a private club in which we get to judge others and to hand out the entry tickets. Our job is not to be gatekeepers of who gets in and who is excluded. Our job is to follow Jesus' example of servant leadership and to practice the way of love. We follow Jesus' example by providing unconditional love and care to others, especially the least among us. While we may disagree with some people's opinions and object to their actions, we should not judge or reject them as persons. We respect their dignity. The history of the church, unfortunately, has countless examples of persons who have sinned, including King David. They had many of the saints of the church had sinned mightily, and yet, they were redeemed by God's love, grace, mercy. Perhaps if we listen respectfully and care for another person, 
who we may disagree with the most, we might, they might very well experience conversion. They might well turn their life around and become the most loving and faithful and dedicated Christian or Episcopalian. Love always triumphs hate. Our hope is knowing that God continues to love us and all others. No one is invisible to God or exempt from God's love, mercy, grace, and compassion. In entering the holy season of Advent beginning next Sunday, as we gaze upon the light of the Advent candles, we can find hope in knowing that Christ is our King who brings light into our world. And it is through Christ's presence in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, that we in turn bring hope and bring Christ's light to others in our world. Amen. I invite you to join me in saying our statement of faith, the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the Father, Father the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are one to you. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops Mark, Michael, and Mark, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Please offer your own prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Lusitanian Church, 
the Right Reverend Jose Pina Galvez, Bishop of the Lusitania Church. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Patrick's Church, Somerset, the Reverend Chris Brannock, priest in charge. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our anthem is sung by Alan Fryer and uh, Laura Melius. It is Sleepers Wake, a voice astound us. Almighty God, 
creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we've fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Maker of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is dying. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us in life to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A prayer for when we cannot receive Holy Communion in this time of COVID. In union, O Lord, with your faithful peoples of every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ, proclaim your resurrection, and await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May you, may I, we live in you and you in us, in this life and the life to come. Amen. Amen.
the wisdom of God, the love of God, the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hand and heart in the world in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 290. Come, ye faithful people, come. May you be well, may you be safe, and may you have a blessed